And I believe we are live. So let's, uh, for all those who are joining in a pre recorded session, normally uh, we log in, make sure all the uh, technicals are flowing, make sure the collar on my shirt is straight. Um, <laughs> it's a little bit ruffled when I'm, when I'm not paying attention. So, what's up, Alex Yeet? What's up, Carolina? Uh, Edward? Josh Shields? Yo, what's up? DNI sent you. Man, I don't know about that. <laughs> so, hey, Dan Dan. Man, that's awesome uh, that you reached out to uh, Gonzalez and uh, he responded positively. I'm really, really enthusiastic uh, to hear about that. It's absolutely fantastic. Paul Trainer, what's up? Uh, anybody? Uh, that is new uh, Then no alert Nothing Nothing no news and that's a wrap glad you guys were able to make it on <laughs> What's up uh, XRP minute? So if any, you know, anybody who is uh, new then definitely uh, oh you got no alert YouTube sucks. <laughs> oh wait a minute. Am I gonna get thrown in YouTube jail? Is that kind of like the uh, Facebook jail? <laughs> so Let's see, you got, man, that's fantastic, Dan Dan. I'm really, really uh, happy to hear that. And it just, it really, uh, you know, shows that, you know, these guys, man, they're on it. And like I was saying, you know, they definitely 100% will, oh, I got to turn this down. You know, they definitely 100% respond to you. Um, they, you know, they're, they're responsive to constituents and that's the whole point. Yeah, that's the whole reason why they're there serving in office is to uh, respond and to support us. So um, that's absolutely outstanding. So Tina Hall, glad to see you on. Michael Metzner, you didn't come uh, on your own? Man, DNI is great at sending people over here. You know, it's kind of like a wrap and the next show kicks on. It'd be amazing if there was uh, a way to uh, connect all this together. So um, anyhow. Carl Lewis, what's up, Omar? So everyone uh, bounces on here. I think everyone coming on, you know, came over from DNI. So Annalise George, good morning. It is morning someplace. Uh, and check this out. So I figured I little bottles don't do it. I'm taking a, uh, a note from the uh, DNI water bottle. It is great. It would be awesome to connect the dots, XRP minute. So, all right, so everyone's bouncing in. I wanna pick up on, on a little note here before we kind of get into uh, the news, we get into some uh, good topics of discussion. And I'm kind of glad that uh, DNI kind of, uh, you know, left off on, on this note. Hey, uh, Spanish Fly, Annalise George, good to see you guys on. So, this is interesting. Um, and, uh, and maybe I'll never get into this. Hang on. You look. <laughs> this is this is actually just a regular size water bottle. That's right. So it's. <laughs> and now I can't drink it. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it does look pretty big on the on the thing. Anyhow, that's pretty hilarious. <laughs> uh, so. Anyhow, so DNI mentioned something about sanctions and he talked about SWIFT and I just wanted to give my two cents on that. I think it's uh, kind of poignant uh, since uh, he kind of left off on that and then we're going to get into some uh, digital asset related uh, things. Uh, hey, Clara Snowden, vet bro, what's going on? Sin City. Anybody who's uh, new to the channel, if you haven't been on yet, definitely make sure you subscribe. Uh, hit the thumbs up on the way in and hit the thumbs up on the way out so if you give a thumbs up thumbs down that's up to you as long as there's a one in one direction so <laughs> uh, it's funny what's up Braddy? Braddy Neilds I can just say this all day I'll just keep uh um so anyhow all right so uh so DNI was mentioning uh sanctions and really, there's a couple different paths here. And so this is where I think it's important. And the U.S. has, has a couple different options. There's obviously bad actors in the world. Um, there's certain things where, it, you know, they, they cause tension uh, to, uh, to the 
freedom of movement, whether it's economic or otherwise, uh, and creating a little bit of turmoil, whether it's uh, raising uh, funds and uh, for uh, for for arms that are actually being utilized against uh, against civilians, what what have you? It doesn't matter. Um, you know, there. But again, there's bad actors, and there's only really two options to uh, to really deal with a bad actor, and one of those is through military engagement and the other is through economic means and that would be through economic sanctions obviously you can bring cases to the united nations and the united nations unfortunately is dominated uh predominantly uh many of the uh entities within the un are then led by some of these uh bad actor states uh, namely uh, north korea uh iran and so forth so they typically will have ill intent and in always trying to push forward their own uh, uh, anti-West ideology and anti-West agenda. So uh, that's that's really you know my two cents on it. But but the point being is that when it comes down to it, there's really a, only a couple different options. And so when it comes to economic means, we're almost better off with nation states uh, fighting each other on an ec from a, on an economic level rather than immediately engaging in a military conflict. Uh, and so obviously, you know, you can argue and debate whether or not uh, economic sanctions will work or won't work uh, and whether or not it has a direct impact on the governments or if the governments will, regardless of those at, to at the top, they're still going to live well. It's typically the people at the end of the day who suffer Namely, if you look at like uh, North Korea, which has been isolated, but the people at the top seem to live pretty well, whereas the rest of the people in the country typically suffer. Now, part of the issue with economic sanction means that you need to have uh, global adoption and global acceptance uh, and global participation of the economic sanction. So let's say if the United States decides on a course of action, which would be an actor state, that rogue state is still going to continue uh, along its, its same path, uh, regardless of uh, what the West wants. So there's always that interesting dynamic uh, that's, uh, that's debated. So anyhow, I thought I would throw that in there. Thanks, DNI, for uh, tossing that out there. <laughs> so, all right, let's see here. Where is Farshad? What's up? <laughs> all right, I'm, now I get stuck looking at these uh, these notes here. So, all right, let me uh, let me open up my notes here and let's get to actually something I'm sure you guys would rather hear about other than uh, global sanctions and uh, and how to deal with a, a rogue state or a bad actor state. So, all right, let's see. <laughs> all right. So let's see. So the, really the, the focus and the title of what I wanted to talk about today is really emphasizing uh, the global economy, the fact that the global economy will be and is definitely moving in the direction of being powered by blockchain and that uh, Ripple and XRP seem to be at the epicenter of what's happening, whether in direct utility at this moment or as the causation uh, of the rollout of similar uh, competitive uh, type product. And so I think it's really interesting. And actually there was an article that I wanted to lead with as kind of current news. And this it showed up on ripple.com. The title of this article uh, is interoperability, interoperability is the key to unlocking the network of networks. And I really thought it was, it was really spot on as we go through the article. Um, first, you know, some of my thoughts on it is that really at the end of the day, uh, through uh, this interoperability, we get automation and we are able to speed up uh, the transaction process uh, in any form of transaction. So if it's in a business transaction, if you think about, I'm glad to see you uh, typing in there. I appreciate that. So, you know, if you have to transport goods overseas, there's multiple triggers that, that happen along the way. So if somebody is, um, 
you know so you you have the uh, transport you have the transport uh, part of it if uh, one of the parties is using or if the parties are using a letter of credit to release payment so in order for that payment to be released certain triggers have to happen uh, certain licensing and permits and whatever uh, has to go along with uh, the bill of lading uh, for transport as it goes into customs etc so um, there's always you know human uh, contact uh, with uh, the product and with the entire transaction whether it's at the banking level or you know if it's at the movement of goods level uh, through the logistics and so if you're able to have automatic triggers so if the entire process is then on the block on the blockchain and you have <clears throat> all of these different uh, parties uh, within this transaction also uh, connected on the on the blockchain then in this case you have the interoperability you have the network of networks so to speak as per this article um, and it's it's so amazing so that means that the from a logistics perspective the shipping companies are triggering uh, the uh, the submission of paperwork for your letter of credit through the banks are triggering uh, different uh, scenarios throughout the process the release of funding uh, yo chip thank you very much for that appreciate that and it appears that the uh, that it worked because it was so instantaneous that I was still mid-sentence and and I got the notification on my phone that is how absolutely amazing uh, the movement of funds are through the XRP ledger it's absolutely amazing so it was probably it's just instant as soon as you hit it it shows up now if I could figure out how to get it to ring on the screen and there's actually a mechanism uh, to trigger uh, on and it but it's not through OBS it's through Streamlabs and I'm trying to get Streamlabs uh, fully functional so that when certain things happen it's immediately automating and crediting uh, individuals as they come in so if you could imagine a solution uh, within the blockchain uh, that is you know automating a process even like this even with the relationship of what we have going on right now with the conversations and you know the subscribers and and all of this obviously there's all these little tie-ins in the software uh, that make things happen but imagine if uh, you know through these processes you know there are other certain triggers that happen you know I mean it's it's really it's unbelievable what you know what can uh, what can really take place uh, through blockchain uh, and when we think about what coil is doing and you know if we think about what XRP tipbot uh, potential is if we think about what uh, some 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 <laughs> zoom uh, I'm not sure exactly how to uh, how to uh, uh, pronounce that. Not really sure. Um, oh, I guess we'll figure it out. Someone here can probably uh, type it, and I know it's there somewhere. Um, but anyhow, you know, there's so many you know aspects of what's happening out there, and all of these pieces are getting connected together. You know, and imagine even in this space, as we're able to connect and leverage uh, everybody's participation in this space, and that to me is absolutely phenomenal if, if there was something like that that was put together you know so but anyhow so when I when I think about you know the interoperability you know I think about speed I think about efficiency um, and then you want to uh, put a, a, a juxtaposition of that through how it's currently done which is the manual completion of these transactions and through the manual completion of transactions then you have the speed and the efficiency of a manual completion of a transaction of a bureaucracy and obviously subject to human error now human error could be something as small as putting the wrong mark on a piece of paper human error could be as uh, small as someone leaving a, a paperwork on a desk all sorts of crazy things happen especially in the global uh, in a global structure not all countries have uh, the exact same processes in place even as much as we'd like to see those same processes Farshad what's up thank you very much for that uh, 999 uh, we got a mosquito flying around here or a bug or something but I appreciate that a lot so you know it's, <laughs> it's funny seeing seeing that on the on the screen now um, so you know so to me you know what's what's so important about you know this blockchain technology is that 
you know, we're able to begin to streamline uh, processes. This, you know, it's similar to if we think back to the concept of why uh, Swift uh, really started in the beginning, right? So Swift back in the early 70s came into being as a means to create a streamlined messaging platform for banks to communicate with each other and all have the same exact coded language. Um, so I think that is, you know, definitely a necessity. Man, Farshad, what's up with that? Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, you know, so if we think about, you know, what Swift was really trying to accomplish, you know, by doing that back in the 70s, now imagine what blockchain is going to accomplish with blockchain technology uh, is going to accomplish by now allowing parties to create environments that will streamline all of these processes. Now, as part of the streamlining of the process, you also have to have an underlying, uh, yeah, what's up, Tina Hall? Thank you very much for that. Uh, you, know, you need to have an underlying uh, uh, movement of the funding of funds as well. So there has to be payment uh, for the streamlining and the flow of these goods. So with all of this, um, as we look at these, again, if we look at these uh, blockchain processes and the interconnection, again, the interoperability uh, of all these different multiple parties and each multiple party as a transaction occurs, there's a payment uh, happening as well. Um, so all of this, again, is going to force uh, and really force all parties, regardless of where they are in the world or a, regardless of where they are in the transactional process, whether it's a large bureaucracy in the banking uh, uh, part of the, the process, whether it's in the shipping part, wherever that uh, bureaucracy might be, uh, it's going to force uh, full efficiency, full transparency, lower costs, and even more trust. So right now, through that process, there's definitely a lack of trust. Man, what's up? Thank you very much for that again. Really appreciate it, uh, Farshad. You know, so there's definitely a, uh, you know, a lack of trust in the, in the current process. And the reason why there's a lack of trust is because things happen on a regular basis where there's errors made and, and you know, and things fall off. So um, <laughs> and there we go. Thank you, Tina Hall. Appreciate that. Um, Auburn Rain. Who's the adult in the room? Wait a minute. Not anymore. Let me get this huge water bottle here that uh, I went to grab uh, the smaller ones, but I didn't feel like opening up the package and this has happened to be open. So, DNI, that's to you. <laughs> All right. So, uh, let's see here. So let me let me open this article here. I think there are a few points uh, within it. If it uh, wants to open, doesn't look like it wants to open. There we go. So the article was on Ripple Insights. You guys can go check it out. Uh, there was really a lot of. Uh, let me see. Let me see. I made some notes. Let me see if there's anything here. And really, there's not much that I can. That it's going to add. Anyhow, I just I kind of put my own thoughts on top of it. You guys can go back and read it if you want. Uh, it's on Ripple.com Insights. Uh, again, interoperability, interoperability is the key to unlocking the network of networks. Um, so uh, with that in mind, let's, let's move into uh, some of the great things that have been happening uh, within the XRP uh, payment space. So again, I think about you know, Ripple XRP, I think about XRP, you know, put Ripple aside for a minute because Ripple, although is doing amazing things within the cross-border payment space uh, and really uh, setting the premise uh, for utilizing a proper uh, or utilizing a digital asset and a uh, blockchain solution to facilitate these cross-border payments, which we're going to get into because um, that gets to the uh, 63 other million reasons why banks are adopting cryptocurrency for cross-border payment. Um, but if we just segment out XRP on its own, one of the, the important and interesting parts of XRP is that it has real-world utility and real-world utility that can be uh, realized. Uh, hang on a second. These, these notifications are popping up and I should... Uh, you know, make a statement here. I got uh, Auburn Rain. Appreciate that. 
and also uh tina hall appreciate the uh the xrp through the tip bot as well as from uh chip man that's awesome so again that's it's so immediate that's that's fantastic imagine you know the movement of uh you know a payment structure through the xrp tip bot is so seamless you know it's so easy to use um so all right so so if we think about again if we want to remove all of the different uh larger aspects uh of this space so let's put ripple aside for a minute let's put ripple net aside for a minute oh farshad appreciate it good night it was good to see you on enjoy having you on the show uh for the time you're here so um let's see here all right so <laughs> that's that water dni sent from thailand that's funny <laughs> uh all right so i'm gonna keep getting distracted here all right uh snowden appreciate that thank you very much for the xrp tip bot they just keep coming over wild star what's going on this is a huge bottle it just wouldn't look right if you're if you're actually drinking out of a bottle of vodka could you imagine you're on the stream and you're just guzzling a bottle of vodka that just wouldn't look right right hmm. monday night that's what happened <laughs> busy week clear whiskey the new whiskey the whiskey of uh, the 21st century so all right so banking banking with xrp now this is really uh this is really awesome so what we saw from the creators of the xrp tip bot is an actual you know banking solution and this is coming through as i was saying it's some or some uh elephant moonshine uh, that's funny <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah uh that's not a jug of water this is definitely not a jug of water oh that is a uh, no all right let me just put that aside over there <laughs> take a shot every time we uh tip out every time we drink the water all right so um so some so x u m m uh from the creators of x r p tip bot and what's interesting is that earlier in the week or towards the end of last week um we have uh we have the creators of uh x r p tip bot uh rolling out the zine dot i o x i g n dot i o then it came to uh came to the realization that j p morgan had acquired an organization back in 2007 and chip and i talked about this the other day um so we had they acquired an organization called sign in uh 2007 and then subsequently jp morgan shut them down in 2013 so now fast forward uh six years and we win uh you know is uh now creating uh this uh zine uh dot io which is a uh really a, 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 a in my opinion it becomes not just a, a wallet becomes a banking app um and it's borderline and we talked about this the other day also really that transactional uh point where we move away from uh brick and mortar banks we begin to move more and more towards online banking and we move more and more towards exchanges and towards apps actually uh becoming our banks um and there's a fine line because as soon as zum which is part of their process um as soon as they apply for banking licensing then in in every uh definition they become a bank so um let me look up here was this uh <laughs> wait a minute uh gxrp uh remember kate uh, winslet saying i'll never let go jack to not i'll always hodl <laughs> funny the gargle report come on killing me all right let's see we've got uh yelitsa del bio chair what is that chirinos that's a hard one to uh we'll just get it as uh yelitsa yelitsa what's up if you're new uh definitely uh throw up a uh hit the subscribe button uh hit some thumbs up that would be fantastic and let's uh let's keep moving through this so so i was looking around trying to get a um 
Oh man, the flight home was great. It was really, really good. Yep. <laughs> Yelly. Yelly would be easier. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Glad, glad to have you on. Um, yeah, Rain, it was, a, it was a long trip. Long trip back. So let's see here. All right. So actually, I was looking around. I wanted, I wanted to get a little snippet from their new website. So all this stuff was happening, I guess, to kind of drag it on. But all this stuff was happening, it seems like a few days ago. Then they ran it, rolled out with this new name. Then, you know, it looks like they're going full, full uh, steam ahead with, uh, with Zum, uh, which, is, which is awesome. So, uh, so I was looking for something on it. Hodor actually already wrote a blog on it and it's fantastic so i want to just go down so we have waste wind who is the founder again of xrpl xrp tipbot so he's actually created this zum and and really again to me you know it becomes you know we're crossing that fine line from their perspective you know they're creating this platform with open api which allows so much development within the space uh to connect to uh banks uh outside you know so you so they want to have it so that they're connecting uh to the banks uh they want to have it so you can easily pay uh you know you can pay your uh any any retail uh purchase uh utilizing their wallet platform um and i'm just scrolling down here uh let me let me pull this up because i don't know if you guys saw this uh, so let me where'd my uh, obs go here we go all right let me go to here let me see how that looks i gotta correct that real quick not gonna look right if uh if i'm out of whack over here out of sorts on my little image all right let me do a quick transition and let's pull this up here there we go all right so you guys can see this here so how will you use it now this is awesome so hodor uh put this together here's an example that he put in his blog and and this is great so look at you saying okay you're on a family trip or a trip with your it, to your family cabin you stop to buy groceries at the cash register the total is displayed alongside a qr code you open up the app on your phone and you scan the code and there's the transaction you pay in your xrp it pays it in us currency it issues it through bitstamp in this case and that's it now you just per made your purchase at kroger using your app using zum you accept it and you're off um and so there's so much application so here you have it you know if you're doing you know through amazon uh whatever it might be there's a ton of integration in this space um here they're you know they're really emphasizing uh user experience um so i'm just going through you know getting some of the uh the key points here i like the fact that you know they they're really focusing on on the customer experience which is amazing uh the e ease of use and here's what i wanted to really highlight so here we have the go live date so they don't really have an official go live date yet uh, but they do plan on rolling it out sometime in 2019 they're not going to have the the wallet uh readily active in 19 or in version one version two they plan on having the ilp wallet version three and four they want a custodial wallet now the thing is they don't have necessarily all the international partnerships and here's where when i talk about that crossover when they go into becoming uh that banking environment so as much as people talk about you know staying away from uh you know the banking environment or banks going away i i believe there's always the need for a third party um and people aren't always going to want to trade uh directly in in cash whatever that cash might be let's call cash as as just our as just our term for you know paying in money um so if you're you're paying one for one people still have this reliance on wanting to use credit and a credit card uh for whatever that purpose might be whether you're getting that extension of a 30-day uh period or you know it's just easier to have one source of payment for everything um a collection so to speak but we're not that far off. So imagine a, uh, a sum and the sum now applies for banking. It becomes your wallet for your fiat currencies. So you can put your euro, your US dollars, your Japanese yen, whatever it might be. But you can hold it on your sum wallet. Uh, you have your sum wallet, but you also have your XRP, you have your Litecoin, your Bitcoin, whatever you might have on there. It's your choice to spend what you want. 
So now you're able to carry and spend and have control over what you're doing. But if you take it a step further, and as they go through, and that's why I was looking at this licensing, I think it's interesting because from the licensing, you know, they're really talking about initially having to acquire uh, two licenses, one, uh, an Estonian license to give them the authority to handle small amounts of XRP in uh, the ILP prepaid wallet, which I'll have to ex explain that a little bit later. And then a Lithuanian banking license uh, to provide the authority for some to handle full custody of material amounts of fiat and crypto. Um, so that's already in version three. So that's where you know we begin to see that crossover. That's also where you begin to see organizations, whether it's through some, whether it's through Coinbase, whether it's through Uphold, whether it's through uh, Cred or Nexus or whatever it might be, they be they're slowly transitioning into the banking entity uh, to where we can then establish credit. Um, so right now the credit is put a digital asset in for every two you put in, you can borrow one. Um, so they want you to back up your digit your loan with uh you know with a with a collateral of more digital asset so it's it's uh it's an interesting way to work it it's the way the only way to work it right now at some point people will be able to establish credit uh but if you can imagine and this goes back to uh banking the unbanked and so you know why why is it significant uh, to, to be able to bank the unbanked. And part of it is, you know, allowing those unbanked to become part of the general global economy. Now, someone that's unbanked doesn't have a credit card, but let's say they're able to make money. Let's say they're generating uh, their cash flow through whatever they're selling. Let's say they're then able to establish credit through utilizing whether it's a, uh, you know, whether it's uh, uh, this sum uh, app, or let's say it's uh, uphold using cred, or let's say it's, uh, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter, the Nexos. They're able to put digital asset out there, and now they're able to borrow against that digital asset. They're able to extend credit, uh, which is pretty amazing because if they can extend credit from there, uh, it also allows them to, to leverage themselves a little bit differently. Eventually, uh, people will be able to borrow actual credit and there'll be a way to provide those credit checks There'll be a way to extend and develop etc. Etc. So anyhow. All right, let me uh, what's the pen? Is that that it? you know what? Sorry about that, man. I'm going back You know, I didn't want to answer but I believe this is your pen Yeah, I think it even says uh, from the uh, Auburn rain studios but you know what, if you leave a pen in front of me and you hand me a pen and I use it, it always seems to walk away as do all my pens with other people. And being that I use pens very infrequently, <laughs> but they're, it's beneficial sometimes to have a pen over here so you can jot down a quick note. Uh, typically on the fly, I'm always using uh, keep. So, <laughs> well, I don't have, yeah, Tina, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm just kind of talking and just creating a little background noise, you know, so you guys can have a chat and, you know, kind of, uh, you know, kick it off. So, <laughs> yep. Hopefully this wasn't your good pen. It says indeed. So maybe it was your good pen. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So where was I? Completely lost track now. All right. This is straight from, uh, straight from uh the confusion of let's go back to the notes all right so all right enough with uh enough with some i thought that was awesome now the other one is there we go miyagi what's going on there we go indeed.com uh so so if we go to uh real world utility and so if we want to look at real world utility uh, we talk about what could potentially be done with XRP. We talk about what could potentially be done through RippleNet. Uh, we just looked at what uh, can potentially be done with some. Now, if we take it a step further, let's go a step backwards. Let's talk about what the potential is in the social media space. So we know that Facebook has been plotting and planning. Uh, they met with the SEC. And so they're trying to come out with their own uh, their own digital asset. 
Uh, and it's interesting that within this space, we've seen a couple other providers try to launch into the social media space. So we have some YouTube wannabes out there like DLive. We've got DStream. Uh, DStream was part of Steemit. Uh, Steemit wasn't such a bad platform, or at least in, in concept. Uh, but the more you got on it, you realized, really, it's important to have two aspects of a social media platform. One, I believe you have to have, in many cases, you have to be first in, or you have to have some life-changing uh, technology that's ease of use, that kind of catches on. Something unique, something different has to occur uh, that, that everybody's going to want to use it, and it has to go through that evolution. So Steam it as an on -sign -out online blogging uh, a portal uh, to utilize the Steam digital asset. In my opinion, I tried it when it first came out, went through the registration process, threw up some blogs, found it cumbersome, difficult. It was a great idea where you could upvote and people can make money through upvotes. But overall, I thought it was uh, just, very, uh, just a very uh, heavy platform to try to utilize. Uh, then if you look at uh, some of the others out there like DLive, and I know, you know Chip has been you know, uh, uh, cross streaming and he streams onto DLive. You know, the downfall of DLive is that it doesn't record any of the videos. So you either have to watch it live or don't watch it at all. Um, I think that's definitely a drawback to that platform. However, there seem to be a lot of gamers engaged somehow on DLive. Kind of a cumbersome platform again to stream through. YouTube isn't isn't the best, uh, or it doesn't, you know, or I don't want to say it's not the best because really there hasn't been another platform as good as YouTube that's rolled out that just seems like overall, but when I say it's not the best, obviously there's other issues uh, dealing with you within the YouTube structure. Uh, there's definitely centralized control across all of the social media platforms. And through that centralized controls, at the end of the day, these social media platforms are out for one purpose. And that's really to accumulate uh, user data and then make money through advertising on these on the user data. Obviously, we've seen some breach of uh, confidence when it came to Facebook. There's you know, people being put in Facebook jail. There's people that are being uh, kicked off of YouTube. Uh, there's people that are being banned on Twitter uh, that might not necessarily, you know, uh, you know, fall into a category where they should have been. But that's because uh, the platform is centralized uh, to a point that, you know, if there's a political agenda within that organization or the checkers within their social media platform are going through and actually banning uh, users, um, but again, at the end of the day, they're accumulating all these users and they're utilizing, again, the data for marketing purpose. Now, these are all free platforms uh, to use and we all use them freely. We all signed up and didn't read the fine print. And part of the fine print is everything you put on our platform, uh, we can use the way uh, we want to use it. Uh, so, you know, so I think that, you know, we're, we're kind of at a, at, a, at a turning point right now that's uh, really important uh, to where, you know, we actually have to start looking at uh, a, uh, a solution uh, for, having, for having something different than uh, what, we, what we actually, uh, you know, what we actually have right now, whether it's Twitter or Facebook or YouTube or, or what have you. So um, let me see here. Let me go up here. Um, <laughs> Chip, glad you said cross streaming instead of uh, cross dressing. <laughs> uh, heads up on security. My browser rates uh, YouTube at a poor D. Well, that's not good. That's bad. I can picture you. <laughs> not me. No way. Uh, Twitter is the HODL report uh, at the HODL report. Just put a T-H-E at the beginning. There we go. YouTube at a poor grade of D. That's horrible. You know, we're one. <laughs> that's what the fine, the fine print says. Make sure you tune in at 10 o'clock on Mondays and Wednesdays and Tuesdays and Thursdays to check out the XRP Minute. 
that's in the fine print. So just make sure you go back and check that out. So <laughs> cross drinking is when you drink uh, beer and whiskey. Um, if you're drinking wine and you move into hard liquor, uh, it doesn't really always work so well. But you know what, beer, beer and Irish whiskey sometimes go pretty well together. So I, you know, wouldn't uh, wouldn't mind that. Uh, Anthony Jackson doing a live stream on Monday night. All right, check this out. Hang on. Rusty Diamond. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. If anybody's new on the stream right now, make sure you uh, go over and subscribe. Hit the thumbs up. Uh, you can hit thumbs up on the way in. You can hit thumbs up right now. You can hit it on the way out. Either way. So, all right. So let's check this out. So we're talking about social media. Now, I think what's what's interesting with this social media uh, platform, again, there's, you know, you definitely need a huge amount of money. Uh, you're taking on a massive infrastructure uh, between Facebook and Twitter and Facebook owning WhatsApp and Facebook owning Instagram. And, you know, and then and really it's just Facebook and Twitter are really the, you know, the primaries out there right now. And obviously, you know, some of the, you know, the kids are going to uh, Snapchat or whatever they're going to at this point. So a lot of, you know, a lot of these social media platforms will be adopted by kids first. Um, you know, or the younger generations, and then it'll move up. Uh, and so if you look at like a platform like LinkedIn, you know, it's it's another one of those platforms, a little bit cumbersome. People get on there. It's not, it's kind of a quasi interesting space. I think people, you know, in, in at some point are getting a little bit of uh, social media burnout where there's just too many platforms to look at. And really, you know, you know, I think that the next level is going to be, you know, trying to bring all these different social media platforms together uh, in in one uh, easy to use app. You know, back in the day, there was um, I can't remember the name of it, but if you think if you were on Microsoft Messenger and then you were on AOL and there were all these different uh, multiple uh, chat platforms you could be on, and then there was one uh, one software. It wasn't on the phone. It was on the computer. Then there was one that would tie all of them together. So, and I can't remember what it was called, uh, but that's it's almost you know where we're at now to find an easy to use you know app solution that's functional that's you know that has a you know a good uh, a, just an overall good uh, experience uh, to where you can tie in these uh, multiple platforms in, instead of trying to to bounce around but at the same time all these companies are vying for you know top spot or vying for a percentage of the marketplace so really if, if we're going to continue down this path then vying for that space means that you have to look out for you know how can you now benefit your users instead of your users continuously benefiting you it becomes a mutual uh shared uh relationship and a mutual shared uh profit center so if facebook for instance is going to find a, a methodology uh, to which they're going to compensate uh, individuals for, uh, you know, participating in whatever, you know, maybe, you know, you're helping, like, let's say, I think a good example would be, uh, you know, through Google Maps, you can go on and rate companies, you can write reviews, and they give you these quasi, you know, uh, you know, merit badges or whatever, depending on how many pictures you posted, and it's it's enjoyable i guess then you go back and see how many tens of thousands of people have uh seen your pictures you know and and, and that's that's always a little bit enjoyable um but i think but here where where it's really you know where we're seeing a major shift in social media is going to be how do all users find some form of compensation uh by utilizing the platform by participating again in some way shape or form uh, through the engagement of the sponsors of the platform so if we look at uh, block.1 block.1 is behind eos uh, eos the digital asset and um, what's what's crazy about this is that last year uh, there well now they're saying in this article this was on bloomberg uh, by the way guys so let me let me share this again. I think here's another one that's that's important to share. Let's go back over here. Let's share this one. Now, 
what's crazy about again what's crazy about all this is that we're starting to see more and more articles positive articles that are popping up on bloomberg and forbes on a regular basis now so they're really emphasizing the digital asset space so it's not just hey let's get news on ccn or coin telegraph or what have you um bloomberg and forbes you know posting some really interesting uh topics in their business section so here you know uh blocked out one has a three billion dollar war chest three billion dollars obviously trying to compete with uh facebook um they're gonna need every last penny of that three billion dollars they claim to have raised 4.2 billion dollars in ico offerings last year um, and so 4.2 billion dollars they launched this new social media application on saturday i've tried to get it it's not available yet uh, but anyhow it's called voice i think they have a decent name it's a little confusing because i got it confused with google voice um so you know there's something about that you know even though hey you know hey, let's go check out voice you know but but you know, but the issue again, I think it's going to come down to branding and name. It's not bad, um, but again, it overlaps a little bit with with uh, with Google. Now, again, the, what what I what I like about this though is what they're planning on doing uh, to really let users post, share, and promote the content. Um, each of those actions will be registered on the blockchain, meaning that once it's there, it's always going to be tracked uh, forever. Um, so unless there's a mechanism to delete, uh, hopefully there's some form of a mechanism to delete. Uh, so it's going to be functioning on the blockchain, which is interesting, a fully functional social media platform utilizing blockchain technology. Now, kick, who we talked about the other day, kick, um, has run their social media network. Now their social media network that has around 300 million customers, about 15 million of them are, are active on a monthly basis. So that's 15 million people active on kick every single month. Uh, now block dot one is going to have to really compete in this space. I bet no one's ever heard of kick. Maybe if you're in Canada, it's big up in Canada, apparently. Um, but with their 300 million customers, obviously, it extends beyond the borders of Canada with the 30 million people they have in Canada. Um, but the point here is that Kik uh, developed Kin. Uh, they were the first to roll out a token that would be utilized on their social media platform in a mechanism for buying and selling, whatever it might be. And they had a store. They were allowing people to buy with their Kin token, whatever it is. So I had invested a little bit when they first came out with it and, and, and there it sits. So not really worth much at this point. Um, but anyhow, it, it's important because of everything that they're doing. Uh, and kick is taking a very, very active role against the sec. Now, as obviously in this article, it points out what Facebook is doing. The Facebook is meeting with, uh, with, uh, the sec. It mentions, uh, what happened with the, uh, uh, the launching of, or this is the the chief uh, technology officer who actually helped Steemit launch, um, and we talked about Steemit a little bit, um, and so at least he has some experience in that space. Now Steemit, again, when I, I mentioned, it's kind of failing at this point. Who knows if they'll make their way back? Uh, but they did lay off around 70% of their workforce. It's always funny how these articles kind of meander a little bit. You know, the point of the topic was all about block dot one launching their own social media platform and then it goes into talking about how steam it had to lay off 70 percent of the workforce and then finally you know they didn't really tell us much about what block dot one is all about in this article which would have been a you know nice if they would have mentioned uh, a little a little more in you know directly in the article um so what i did here if you go to the block dot one website you can actually go down and and read some uh, interesting articles. They have a press release over here. Now, if you go to their voice website, you can watch the, the keynote on there. You can sign up for beta access right now. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and you can check it out, you know, when it comes into, uh, into beta. You know, I think, you know, just from this image, who knows if that's it. We'll see if it has a decent platform. If it has a platform, at least, 
you know, along the lines of, it looks like a cross between like an Instagram and a Facebook and a Twitter, somewhere in the middle. So it may or may not be cool. We'll, we'll find out and see how it, how it catches on. Um, so, so that's kind of, but at least what we're seeing is a, a complete movement and trend in, in this direction. So, all right, let me, uh, let me go back to, you know, some of the chat. Sorry, I've kind of been, uh, ignoring you guys here. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, all right, here's another bottle. Here we go. Auburn rain. The noise is so loud right now, and I'm bummed that some folks who trust it can no longer be trusted. What are we talking about? What's that? Um, I don't know. All right. Is that Brock Pierce? Um, yes, EOS. All right, I know you posted that a while ago. So nothing is ever deleted on the interwebs. I, there's got to be a mechanism they can build into it that they can get rid of it, right? I got to believe there's something. All right, let me go through. Um, I saw it on the internet. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I want to see coil and cinnamon. I think cinnamon is going to be awesome, but again, it's going to all come down to uh, the presentation. You know, right now, I think coil. You know, it's 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 a great it's a great uh, it's a great point. Um, but at the same time, you know, you know, I don't know. You know, I try to log. I try to use coil. I'm not really engaged in coil so much. You know, it's just it's just one more thing. You know, you get you get bogged down, and I I want to use coil, I really do, um, but I just find that you know it's got to have an easy uh, easy user experience uh, on on the phone as a mobile app uh, to really simplify. And I think Cinnamon, you know, Cinnamon's got to roll out the same way. It's got to have a really solid, nice interface, uh, and you know, the, and and have that good user experience. I believe that. You know, there, there's so many different aspects to it. Um, uh, you know, someone that I work with, uh, he had rolled out a software and he put the software out, developed it back in the uh, in like the early 90s. And he continued building out this software. We finally got our hands on it. And it was something that was like so far ahead of his time that it wasn't even really in demand at that time. But he, he was kind of this visionary and he, and he saw so far ahead to like right now so this is like you know how many years ago and so he saw the need for this solution but he wasn't able to properly you know package it for today's uh ui experience now he had all the technology built on the back end of a database and again the presentation of it the idea concept behind it was applicable to now it wasn't applicable really people didn't get it back then but they get it now, they need it now, and he finally rolled it out with a brand new UI experience. Still not exactly the way I would want it, but it was night and day. Now I'm looking at some of these others, and it has to have a solid UI interface. You know, otherwise you're going to lose. Uh, you're definitely going to lose. Uh, you know, some of the some of the uh, people. Um, I I thought it was hooked up with uh, Coil. So I'm not sure. I have to go back and check it out. I definitely signed it up, uh, Chip. I definitely put the channel on Coil, but I'll go back and check it out. Maybe not. Um, Auburn Rain, Google, Facebook, Amazon are on the hit list. Oh, man, that's right, all of them. So that's that's an interesting article. I, I pulled that up. Um, let me see, where is it? Here it is, right here, Bloomberg. Google, Facebook, and Apple fall on antitrust scrutiny. I don't know if this is what you're talking about. So it looks like um, Google, uh, Facebook, Apple tumbled as the companies appear set to undergo U.S. antitrust probes after the Justice Department and Federal Trade Commission agreed to split up oversight. So there's so much going on. Uh, it's crazy. You know, it's really crazy. You know what uh, what could potentially happen here? Let me transition back over here. So. Um, yeah, so there's there's a lot going on in that space right now and it, whether it's you know it, And it it seems to be you know cross party lines, you know, so you have the DOJ That's looking to start investigating uh, Facebook and Amazon you have stuff out of the EU um, Then you have you know calls from Elizabeth Warren 
uh, to break up the tech giants. And there's a lot of pressure coming from all sides. Obviously, there, there you know, could be a difference of opinion as to why you know, they want to go after them. You know, but man, you know, the hammer is going to come down. And it's going to be interesting you know, to see what kind of experience. Yeah, to your point, if you spin YouTube off of Google, you know, and then, you know, you're able to, uh, you know, you're able to utilize it uh, differently or build on that platform differently. You know, it, it'll, who knows? You know, it's going to be, you know, I don't know. You know, I, I really don't know. I do know, though, however, that if the government's coming after them for antitrust violation, my concern is going to be uh, the economy at that point. So if we think about uh, what happened back in the 90s uh, when the Clinton administration went after Microsoft, uh, for antitrust violation, uh, that set the entire market in a uh, in a spin, in a downward spin, and kind of burst the uh, the high tech bubble and really set things into motion uh, for some economic uh, turmoil. So if they go after Facebook and Google and Twitter and 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 Apple and everybody else for these antitrust violations, we're going to see some ripples in other parts of the industry um, and definitely in the economy. So. You know that'll be uh, it'll be kind of crazy to see exactly what's happening now from the Democrat perspective. I believe they're coming after them, you know, for a different reason. I think that the current Trump administration is coming after them for exactly what uh, Rain had said, and you're putting you know Twitter on the list is you know too much abuse of power. Google is tracking everything. You know we don't know how in depth. Amazon is tracking everything, you know, and we don't know, you know, in terms of, you know, these uh, mod moderators or the monitors, uh, let's call them monitors, they're not moderators, but monitors on Twitter and Facebook, sorting through everything and deciding, you know, who to remove, who not to remove, you know, and so, uh, you know, but the, from a political perspective, there's definitely a, you know, a degree of, uh, of um, I ideological differences as to why they would want to break them up, you know, so you know, kind of interesting. Now, all right, so that is uh, Bloomberg. I'm glad you brought that up. That was a good article, actually. Now, going into cross-border payments. Now, here we can kind of sum out the hour with something really interesting. And this was, you know, 63 million reasons why blockchain or why banks are adopting blockchain and digital asset um, and cryptocurrency. So this is, to me, you know, real world utility, uh, utility really on a, on a different level, because here's what we're seeing is, and this, this was on uh, Cointelegraph, it was also on CCN, and, and you can kind of drill down and find even more, but the world's biggest bank splashed $63 million on a blockchain digital currency. So here we have some of the biggest banks like MUFG and uh, UBS, and others that are participating in developing a central bank uh, solution for cross-border payments by uh, utilizing a digital currency. So you might have a lot of these central banks uh, that are that are resisting, uh, and they might be you know resisting, and there might be fud even when it comes to the RippleNet solution. But again, when I in the beginning, you know, I, I talked about the fact that. You know, RippleNet kind of opening that door. You know, they were the the ones to really you know create the proof case uh, for the the need and the functionality you know of uh, of digital assets in the cross border payment space. So now here we go. You know, now we're starting to see uh, the big banks you know trying to come together and trying to you know create their own digital asset. So their settlement coin, according to the article here is going to be called USC. So now the banks are in Japan, Europe, and the United States. Um, I believe Canada as well. Um, and here we have, um, there's an organization called Finality International. They got $63 million in capital from 14 banks. And uh, so this was on CCN. The 14 banks are Barclays of Europe, uh, the United States uh, State Street, Japan's MUFG, uh, uh, Sumitomo Mitsui Banking Corp. Um, and then we have uh, UBS and Credit Suisse. Um, and so it's really interesting that, you know, now they're, they're making this attempt. Now on, on the one side, we have Ripple with X Rapid. 
Uh, now, the thing is, it's not just about the settlement. And, and I think this is where everybody's kind of missing the boat a little bit outside of the RippleNet family. So you have the RippleNet solution, which is really a trio of solutions. And then you have, um, you know, and then you have these other organizations and banks that are trying to replicate exactly what uh, RippleNet has accomplished. Now, RippleNet, you know, started or Ripple started back in 2012. So they have a seven year head start on everybody else. Now, JP Morgan coming in with a JPM uh, coin, obviously their narrow focus in this case, they think it's all about the coin, but it, it really isn't. It's not just the settlement part of the process. And that's where I believe they're missing, you know, the bigger part of the picture. So, and that's where RippleNet is so, you know, unique and different in that they're offering that trio, right? So they're offering the uh, messaging component, which uh, Brad Garlinghouse refers to as Swift 2.0. They have the X Rapid component, which is now what these other banks are trying to, uh, to make, uh, which will also then provide liquidity. And then eventually we'll have the X Via, which becomes the API, you know, easier uh, connectivity uh, solution. So, you know, once we really see the purpose of RippleNet and we see that what these other guys are trying to accomplish, you know, how long is it going to take them to realize that at this point they're kind of testing the markets in an attempt to develop something that already exists? Um, and, you know, exactly what Carl's saying, you know, how do you catch Ripple, you know, uh, and, you know, what are you going to do? You know, but they, but to me, it, what's what's important here is that is that it, it it's, you know, further proof that RippleNet is ahead of the game and RippleNet is making huge waves uh, in this space. And all these big banks and central banks are now, now trying to play catch up uh, to match what RippleNet is doing, you know, realizing that it's already too late. You know, they're so much further ahead. Now in this space of, you know, how many hundreds of billions of dollars in, uh, in digital asset and uh, cross-border payment transactions that can take place, you know, I think it's really significant uh, that it, there's room for the competition, you know, but RippleNet is just so much further ahead. So, you know, time will tell at this point. Um, let me see here. Squirrel. <laughs> Hit the subs and the thumbs up. That's awesome. Just going to do a little scroll up here. Uh, see, uh, I know you guys are talking about other stuff. XRP Minute. Finally got his mic to work. So we don't uh so when you go live, then we don't have to uh listen to the underwater XRP minute. Although that was super enjoyable, you know, the underwater version, you know, so <laughs> but it's good good that you got it fixed. Good that uh that we're able to hopefully able to hear you uh stream again tomorrow night at ten o'clock. So let me see here. Um Trying to get down through these uh, chats where you guys are talking about other stuff. So not going to rehash it. You guys already read it. No point of rehashing. Notorious XRP, glad to see you on. You might have already been on, but anyhow, glad to have you on there. Uh, Multi-hop. Glad you brought that up, Ed. So anyhow, uh, awesome, uh, awesome uh, that you guys were all on here uh, tonight. Really appreciate it. Uh, again, you know, hanging out 10 o'clock here eastern standard time uh it's a you know great place for us all to be you know late at night for all those on the other side of the world in australia thailand wherever else you might be in the uk obviously it's uh you know what could be super late uh late at night over in the uk but you know elsewhere in the australia realm of the world uh morning uh, so again, really appreciate everybody for being on. If you're new, make sure you guys subscribe. If you have subscribed and you want to be notified every time uh, we put up a, a video or live stream, go ahead and hit the notifier bell. However, at this point, every Monday and Wednesday at 10 p.m., um, live streaming. Uh, there's some big things on the horizon that, uh, that we're working on. Hopefully we'll have some announcements dropping pretty soon. I think you guys will all be super fired up when you hear about it. You know, I'm excited about it. And, uh, and so it's definitely going to be, uh, 
something uh, something pretty amazing. And anyhow, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays we've got uh, we've got uh, XRP Minute Chip streaming on Tuesdays and Thursdays at, at 10 o'clock, and then we've got Auburn Rain streaming on Fridays at 10 o'clock, and then in the nine o'clock slot right before you've got DNI streaming Monday through Friday, and then I'm streaming on Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. So definitely stay tuned. Some things that we're working on. Uh, forget about all the nonsense that's happening in the community. Forget about all that. What's important is that everybody stays focused uh, on what's on what's really important. So um, anyhow, uh, with that said, um, again, uh, that's a good question. Um, I think it uh, might have a. Uh, <laughs> It might have some initials in it, a three initial. Uh, we'll see. We'll see where that goes. Um, anyhow, uh, appreciate that uh, XRP minute. <laughs> XRP minute. Uh, so, all right. I think the uh, my phone is uh, streaming a little bit. Anyhow, all right. Thumbs up on the way out. I'm going to wrap it up. I <clears throat> appreciate everybody being on again. And make sure you guys uh, tune in to check out Chip tomorrow night. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Until then, make sure you guys keep hodling your crypto. <laughs> See you later.